good welcome back to my channel if you're new welcome my name is morgan and this is mo life on this channel we talk about life love health relationships happiness all that good stuff so if that sounds interesting to you feel free to hit that subscribe button just a side note i'm like 83 subscribers away from a thousand subscribers so if y'all are new i really appreciate you hitting that subscribe button Anyway, the topic for today is back on the relationship aspect of things, and it is going to be five tips to think about before you move in with somebody. So I did live with my previous boyfriend, and there were a lot of things that I didn't think about before going into it, and I made a lot of mistakes. Um, so I want to share my knowledge with you if you're considering moving in with your partner, um, just some things to kind of think about before you make that really big decision because it is a bigger deal than people might make it out to be. Okay, so number one is have a solid foundation first. So in any relationship, trust needs to be the bare minimum foundation for what you have because you can't build without a solid foundation. Make sure you guys have that mutual trust. Make sure you have that conversation that this is something that you both want to do make sure this is somebody that is treating you nicely and you don't already have doubts about because a lot of times people will be like oh i have some doubts but i think if we take the next step it will kind of like solidify things more and like things will get more serious and that's not usually what happens usually things get exacerbated or they increase um like issues do um once more stress is put onto the relationship and moving in together with somebody as exciting and fun as it may seem sometimes it is actually really stressful um so making sure you have that solid foundation and that strong relationship before taking that next step now i don't want to put like a timeline on it um i've seen people move in with each other after two months um with my ex i moved in with him after about five months of being together um, some people wait until engagement like everybody does it differently I don't want to say like don't move in before a year it's more like don't move in until you know for a fact that your foundation is solid and this kind of ties into number two is I need y'all to have had your first real ass argument before moving in with each other I think a lot of couples in the beginning you have that honeymoon phase like shit sweet cute romantic dates cute texts good night texts good morning texts all the posts on the ig snap stories like it's rainbows and butterflies and those first initial months might make it seem like your relationship is a-okay but in reality you haven't seen your partner in all of their forms right as human beings we are all different in different situations if you've only ever seen them when they're in a good mood you only ever see them around you and never around their friends or around their family or if you haven't ever had that real fight and seen them in a situation where they're upset and they're actually like aggravated then you're not seeing them completely as a person i think a lot of times we have a false perception of somebody and we have this like idea of who, of who they are and by getting into that first argument and really getting into that first disagreement it will show you, one, how they handle conflict, two, how how or if they respect you during that conflict. Um, it's really important to know how people manage their anger because it can tell you a lot about them and where they are on their emotional maturity or their personal development. And I think a lot of people just skip over this and be like, well, we've never argued for like five months so we just must not ever argue as a couple like we're just like perfect like that but it's like no like some shit is gonna go down and i just highly encourage you to see the entire person in all of their realms meet that see them around their family see them around their friends see them when they're upset see them when they're tired see them when they're mad see them when they're sad see them in all of their states and decide if this is somebody that you still want to be with and then two want to take that next step with see all of them if you can number three is talk about finances so this is a really really big one and there's all this discussion on social media about like should men and women go 50 50 should men pay all the bills all this and that and this is a conversation for you and your significant other if you guys both think that y'all should go half 
then agree to that. If y'all both think he should pay all the bills, then agree to that or vice versa or whatever you think. But make sure it's established beforehand. Um, again, assuming is like the worst thing you can do in this situation because if you go in with all these thoughts of how you think it's going to be and then their idea of what it's going to look like is, doesn't match up, it's going to cause so many problems. Also, regarding like bills and finances, I want you guys to think about the lease. Are you both going to be on it? Is he going to be on it or just you going to be on it? And that is important because if for whatever reason you're both on the lease, and you guys decide to separate, you are now legally bound and responsible for that financial payment, even if you don't live there. So this happened to me, me and my ex signed a lease together. Um, we Things happened and I moved out, but my name was still on that lease. So that prohibited me from being able to move into my own place because if a new landlord would run my records or whatever, they would see that, oh, you're still on a lease with this person, like at this landlord, like you can't get your own place. Um, so making sure you're thinking about that because I did not consider that. And then also considering the fact that like that person might not get you off the lease. Like in my situation, we were on it together. I moved out. He said he was going to do the paperwork and make sure I was off the lease. It didn't happen for like three months or at least a couple months. And so that prolonged my ability to move on by however many months because he didn't take care of what he said he was going to. But it's like, at the end of the day, it's my fault because I agreed to sign that legal contract saying that I was gonna be responsible for the payment as well. So think about that. I never considered that and I had to learn that the hard way. So I wanna share that with y'all. Number four is gonna be talk about household responsibilities chores and expectations of each other um are you both gonna split chores evenly does one person make the bed every monday wednesday friday saturday and the other person the other days who's doing dishes who's doing laundry this is a huge point of contention for a lot of couples and pretty much all of my friends that are living with their all my friends are living with their fiance or significant others always complain about like the housework and how like it is a point of stress and like conflict in their relationship because one person's doing it and the other person isn't or they said they're going to and they don't and it's just like annoying extra stress that you don't want in your relationship so make a chore chart have a conversation um just establish something beforehand and then this will also kind of like help you see okay if you're going to live with a man does he expect you to cook clean and do his laundry does he expect that of you if he does are you okay with that are you not okay with that right having these conversations instead of just assuming is going to save you so much stress confusion and assumptions like have these conversations all right and tip number five is going to be talk about personal time and personal space so if you're in a relationship with somebody and you live with them you're probably going to be you're obviously going to see them every single day but how are you spending that free time after work? Are you both hanging out every single night after work? You're always together and you're together on the weekends. Like how do you each need to have your own time spent? Like I enjoy, I need my alone time. I'm social, but I need time at the end of the day to just like be by myself. And having those conversations can really help because sometimes in relationships we take shit personally, right? If I was like, hey, baby, like, I'm actually going to go like read in my room. If my partner knows that, oh, like Morgan needs her a long time every single night, it's not going to get personal. But if he doesn't know that, he might think, damn, Morgan doesn't want to hang out with me. Like, she doesn't like me anymore. Like, da -da, all those kind of thoughts hard to happen or vice versa. So having conversations about what you need from them when it comes to spending time together, but also when it comes to having that alone time together. Also a bonus tip that I just thought of is I want you to think about conversations around boundaries with them bringing people into the house. One, this is a shared space. So have conversations about people coming into your shared space. But two, when they leave and come back out, like if they have like a girl's night out or they have a guy's night, what you expect from them in that situation. Um, 
in the past um my ex has gone out with his friends and when you're not with somebody like when you're not living with somebody it's very easy to lie but when you're living with somebody you can't lie and say that you're at home when you're not at home um so this happened um he went out had a guy's night whatever i don't have a problem with it whatever text me be safe and he never came home so it was like you can't lie to me and tell me that you fell asleep at home last night. Sorry, I didn't text you. Sorry, I didn't call you. I was, no, you literally weren't home. So setting expectations on that as well, especially if you are social and you like to go out a lot, like having those clear expectations in place, setting up respectful boundaries. So you both know what to expect of each other. And there are standards and expectations for how you should address certain things. But yeah, those are my like six tips. I experienced this and it honestly, I fucked up uh, to be blunt with it. And so I wanted to share my advice with you all so you could think about the things that I just mentioned and try to avoid um, some of the complications and issues that could arise when you move in with somebody. Obviously, if all things are go, it's a green light, like go live your life. That's good, but just make sure you're actually like, this is a serious shit. Like, moving in with somebody is actually serious. Signing legal documentation with somebody else you're not married to is serious. Like, I think people just, like, gloss over these facts. Like, you being legally contracted with somebody is not a light issue. Like, it would involve lawyers and fees and stuff to figure out if you don't know what you're doing. So, I just want you to be smart. I want you to think deeply about it. I want you to pray on it too. Make sure you're praying and ask God if this is the right decision for you. But just please consider these things instead of just jumping in to a new house, apartment with somebody just because your relationship has been fine and dandy for a couple of months. That is all for today's video. Please make sure you like, comment, subscribe. I only need 83 more, so please help me. Um, share this with anybody who could use the information or who is going through this process right now. Um, and I will catch y'all later.